I do want to get to this complicated, interesting Trevor Bauer story because it is unlike anything I have ever seen in sports and anything I think I have ever seen in the way it divides people politically along lines I'm not even understanding because if you side with Trevor Bauer before the recent accusations and you ride with his army of supporters because he was the brash guy who spoke freely before it was popular in baseball to see some of what it is that's happened with him that is now being taken as a victory lap on behalf of I'm not sure what, like I'm legitimately not sure what, that women sometimes might falsely accuse, but the percentages are that males abuse their power at a very high clip, and women usually don't come forth into what it is that this woman entered into a relationship, no matter how much she was looking for money, thinking that they're going to take a physical beating, and then after that, Trevor Bauer is going to become a victim and a freedom fighter, but he's banned from baseball, even though he's not legally guilty of anything. But he sure as hell doesn't seem innocent here either. But we'll get to the details of that story in a second. I've been remiss because Billy... Hell of a setup. ...has had 18 <laughs> hours to enjoy Marlins playoff baseball, and it has one run, and it was super frustrating. Billy careened in here sideways 25 minutes into his day. Like his day, it's playoff baseball. He's been waiting through the heat. He had to listen to the Panthers be talked about. His team played a playoff game in an electric Philadelphia, and you got here 20 minutes late. I was told, because your priorities are screwed up, that you were dealing with family stuff. Yeah, I had a, a thing with my daughter. Seems pretty. Yeah. What? Well, it's I mean, playoff I have... baseball, and the Marlins are in the playoffs. I get it, but like, I was like, you know, I'm gonna do a three-hour broadcast later today. We're gonna watch the game live. I'll watch along. So I thought, you know what? In exchange for these three hours, maybe it could be 20 minutes late. I ran it by the higher ups, and they just said, eh. And that was that. They'll get mocked on air. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. That's what happens how, right here. How was everything with your daughter before? I want to go back to David Sampson for a second because I do want to talk. I don't love the optics. I'm like Cody. I don't love the optics of talking about this story, and it's all dudes around here. But regardless, I wanted to start with where it is that how about his daughter? Is she okay? I mean, <laughs> everyone's healthy and happy. Everything it's all good. Thank you for asking, Stuart. Yeah, everything's good. Yeah. What a night of baseball, huh, Dan? Did you watch? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, sad. I know you like to watch the Rays sometimes, so I don't know if you were tired well, of the earlier. Rays game. They yeah, were earlier. Yeah. They were earlier. They, they didn't score. <laughs> baseball had your fill yesterday. I do. You got to combine one run in 18 innings yeah, in your team. Yeah, not great. Not a great situation. Yikes. For my, What's uh, the deal with your raise attendance yesterday, huh? Yeah. That wasn't great. Why did you turn this segment that I was throwing over to you for your Marlins authentic reaction as a fan of this team since a child? Why are you throwing the show back at me? Well, no, because I sensed that after what Stu got to the thing, asking if my kid was okay, we're going back to Brower land. So I said, you know what? Let's turn back to baseball land for a moment because we'll get to Bauer <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Uh, he started quizzing you. <laughs> David, uh, let's go back to this Bauer conversation uh, because I'm legitimately confused. What happened? I'm legitimately confused. What, what happened? Why are you making that face at me? Well, how far back do you want to go? You want to just know, talk about what happened in the last two days? In the last two days, there was a claim. This is civil, not criminal. Trevor Bauer was never charged with the crime. There was a civil claim where Trevor Bauer sued his accuser, alleging that she got in the way of him making money because he wasn't playing professional baseball anymore because of what happened to his reputation. She countersued him, which is what happens when one person sues one person civilly, the other person sues back. So they're suing each other. Then yesterday, the lawsuits were both dropped. They were settled. And word got out that Trevor Bauer did not pay this woman, whose name I'm not gonna mention because I don't know that it's right to. And the woman did not pay Trevor Bauer. Nobody got any money, lawsuit over, and that's the end of it. Then Trevor Bauer went on Twitter and released a video saying, now I can talk. During the lawsuit, I couldn't, but now I can. Let me explain to you what kind of woman this woman is. And he went into a three-minute exchange of victim blaming. 
and victim shaming, saying that she wanted money. She took a video of me while I was sleeping and her face looks great. She looks happy. He, she texted her friend saying, I'm worth $51 million, let's get him. Who's next on my list of players to have sex with and get their money? As though explaining why he beat the crap out of her without her consent because she wanted money. And by the way, I never did that. Then in the video, he actually lied. And he said that the court said that I never did it. And that's not at all what happened. When there's a domestic violence restraining order, the question is, does the court grant it? Does the court extend it? And what the court looks to, among other things, is, is there future harm? Is there imminent harm? And Trevor Bauer had said, I'm never seeing this woman again. And the woman had overstated her concern that he wanted to see her again. So the judge said, there's no need for this restraining order, so I'm not going to keep it in place because Trevor is not gonna be with this woman. They didn't talk about whether or not Trevor had beaten her up, whether or not Trevor had choked her out or beaten her private parts when she was unconscious. That was not the issue for that hearing. Then when the case was dismissed on the claims and the counterclaims just the other day, settled, again, no finding of fact of what exactly happened. As a matter of fact, there was a thought in the opinion something was amiss. But Trevor's video would have you believe, hey, this woman was doing nefarious things. Then one last thing happened this morning. Trevor Bauer again came out with an entire diatribe of how the woman's lawyers are in violation and should be disbarred because they had videos and emails that they did not turn over on discovery. Let me explain the law here. If you are found to have violated discovery rules, the judge under all scenarios can impose sanctions, can force discovery, can reopen cases, can go all the way up to disbarment. What Trevor Bauer is saying happened, if it did happen, it is a very, very big deal. But there is zero proof. It is merely him, along with his agents, trying to steer the narrative so that he can work in Major League Baseball again. You have said he would not. He will never again. And the thing that I want to talk to you about, because for the record, people should know, uh, he's got at least four accusers. Uh, this is one of the stories. And uh, while none of us know what is true in that situation except for two people, I don't know if even he were to somehow rehab the freedom to work because, he, and in his words, he's been falsely accused and framed and, and what, blackmailed, whatever it is that he is saying happened to him. The thing that gets him back into baseball as it relates to this story, if I tell you only you have allegations that these are the bedroom habits of someone from four accusers, never mind legal, not legal, consent or anything. Can a major league team welcome any of that into its organization? Because I, I, it's a rare case, David, where I believe that someone who's got Cy Young type talent won't work again because baseball can't welcome somebody who the Dodgers signed only for a couple of years because he couldn't be trusted here because he was already careening toward a, a personality land that made people in baseball deeply uncomfortable before any of these allegations. It's one thing taking the ball from Terry Francona and whipping it into center field. It's another thing being on Twitter and being on social media and being outspoken and, and having your own sort of PR strategy. But when it comes to domestic violence, that's a whole different level of not acceptable. Now, there are players who get accused, who serve their time, and who get another chance, like Marcelo Zuna, our old friend Marcelo Zuna. And there's some players who don't get another chance, like I suspect Domingo Herman will not get another chance. And Julio Urias is likely not. Maybe not even Wander Franco, though that wasn't domestic violence. The question is, is how do you do the press conference? How do you announce the signing of Trevor Bauer? How do you explain to your fans that you're okay with this? The problem I have with that scenario is as an employer, I don't want to dictate my employees' kinks. I don't want to say what is acceptable or what is not acceptable in the bedroom. I want to draw a line where here's what's not acceptable, doing anything without full and continued consent. That's it. With full consent that continues and is never brought into question, 
I don't want to dictate what my players or what my employees do in the bedroom because God knows that's not the business I want to be in. But if there's a question of consent, it doesn't matter anymore. Game over. I don't want that person around. I don't know genuinely what to do with the macro on this, though, where a segment of America rallies behind Trevor Bauer on something. Disgusting. Well, but I just I can you explain it to me? Because. Yes. OK, go ahead. Because there are men who feel and I get this just like it, I'm not comparing. But for those of us who live with the red light on, we live right now saying you better be careful what you say, because at any moment you could be, quote unquote, canceled. And so it informs us as we try to keep our brains ahead of our mouths with the microphone. When it comes to the situation of the Me Too movement, where women are empowered and women are speaking out and women are actually trying to say, it's not okay what men are doing to us. There are men who are threatened by that because that is their modus operandi. They use sex, they use power, they use money to get control. And it happens in relationships, it happens in workplaces, it happens everywhere. And when that foundation gets rocked, that really is jarring to people, to men. It's, it's crazy, men David, it, it really is crazy to me, David. It really is that the threat to male power would be so strong that you would find, try and wrap yourself in the low percentage of false allegations so that you could believe that men could keep the power to what? To allegedly beat up a woman during sex and go with the new, the new uh, scandal proofing propaganda of I'm, I'm an innocent man. I'm, I'm not guilty of anything here. I'm, someone's trying to take advantage of me, my money, my career, and look, here's the proof and that gives me the right uh, physically to have, uh, you know, violent sex and have a, a, a defense we haven't heard before. The rough sex uh, ability to protect yourself against allegations that you're someone who's uh, physically violent. I actually don't think it's about the rough sex as much as people are defending Bauer actually because they want to just keep power however they define it personally, not just for the rough sex part of it. It's to make sure that they maintain control in every situation, in every scenario over women. So anytime they can back Bauer, they're going to. Uh, David, we did not have time after that subject matter to get to your movie review. So if you want, he does it on nothing personal uh, every day. Every day he watches a movie. There is a movie review there. Thank you, David. We'll talk to you next week. Billy, I like that that sign behind you says we have gone one day without talking about a certain someone, but I think we should change that uh, certain someone now to Taylor Swift. Days without mm. talking about Taylor Swift because her bringing yet more fans to football allows us all to arrive. The writers are no longer striking. We've arrived at the content game being mastered by the Kelseys. The Kelsey family has propelled this tight end into superstardom, and he speaks on behalf of America so much, Mr. Pfizer does. <laughs> he has brought so much fame and attention to the sport that we thought didn't need any more fame and attention. They've got a documentary on Amazon. He's in every commercial. Aaron Rodgers getting his league stolen from him by Mr. Pfizer. They, the Kelsey brothers, have now filed this complaint on their world's most popular podcast. <laughs> Jason and Travis Kelsey uh. have called out the NFL and NBC, speaking on behalf of America, for going overboard on Taylor Swift coverage. <laughs> That's so great. That's the end of the content game right there. Well where played. They, where they can get the content on their number one podcast complaining about, oh, come on, come on, Swift people, Swifties who are making us so popular. The Chiefs and the Jets Sunday night was the most watched show on network TV since the Super Bowl. It was after the Pacheco touchdown when they cut right to her. I think that I think that's where the everyone Jets. that's where it jumped the ship for everyone. Jumped the ship, jumped the shark for everybody. Football's gonna make us turn on Taylor Swift. Oh, he's already there. This is my worst nightmare. Yeah. I love Taylor Swift. I've loved being a Swifty. I've loved doing it in somewhat silence with Mike Golick Jr. and us being the only 
people to to bond over this thing that was well, you're the only Swifties yeah, no, in the world. No, 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 Makes Everyone's some, trying to out Swifty each other. Yeah, yeah. It's just, a Swift off. That's my frustration. <laughs> just make some. Uh, well, you're part of this. engagement. A Swift off. No, but this is this is the issue. I saw in 2018. I'll have you know. Wow. Billy's our biggest Swiftie. reputation tour. Huh. Wow. Where were you? I haven't seen her on tour. I really wanted wow. to see her. Wow. Wow. Not a fan. A Please leave this conversation. Wow. Wow. Oh, did you just send him to the penalty box? No, I just asked him to leave the conversation, uh, sir. No, it. wait Kindly. a minute. You know what? Why don't we put him yeah. at the Eras tour? Yeah. Hey, can we get the Eras tour no, in the yeah. penalty box? And let's let Jeremy go see, go to the Eras tour right now. Uh, Jeremy, go where they're sending you right now. Out of the conversation. Send him to the Eras tour. <laughs> send wherever it is that I need to send him to get video to content tour, of him please. not being swifty enough. Wherever it is that you need to send Jeremy by way of penalty because Billy just unmasked. Oh, wait, Genesis is in the penalty box. Go to the Kanye West concert over there, sir. <laughs> Billy, you just, this is, this is fairly shocking. Not as shocking as you putting Vic Fangio on notice, but you publicly declaring your Swifty bona fides in a way that crushed Jeremy, sent him scampering from the room because he's never been to a Taylor Swift show, and you have better bona fides here. Where has this person been hiding from me? This person that went to a Taylor Swift concert. You being a in more plain sight, my friend. A more a more Swifty than Jeremy. It was an incredible show, I'll tell you that, Dan. I saw Chris Cody's neighbor there. The guy came up to me and said, I'm Chris Cody's neighbor, and we looked at each other every once in a while and we were kind of pointing at each other during songs. It was very nice. Camila Cabello was there, Charlie XCX. The actual letters, but then if you say it fast, it's like a Which play on words. Yeah. Which neighbor was it? I don't know. He's like this tall kind of jack. It was like five years ago. I don't remember, <laughs> man. This is pre-COVID. I love a good finger point at a concert, though. It's great, you know? I you made me, yeah. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I actually, <laughs> so they, they were decent seats. I got them for my wife for her birthday years ago, right? And I have to be honest with you, I did not like see. I thought that I could just blend in there and no one would know who I was. Not that I'm like this person that's recognized, but I was like, I'm going to enjoy this concert but I don't know that I want people seeing me enjoy this concert. And I don't know that I want people seeing me singing or God forbid dancing. Cause I'm not a good dancer at all. Right. And then when Chris's neighbor came up to me, he's like, Hey, I'm Chris's neighbor. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, Oh, good. And then I see he's a section over from me and we can make eye contact. And it was almost like I needed to see his neighbor dancing and enjoying the show before I gave myself permission to do so because I was worried about being judged by Chris's neighbor You're that welcome. I will never see again in my life, more than likely. But I didn't want to have that awkwardness. That's how insecure I was kind of being there and enjoying the show. That I looked at him, and once I saw that he was enjoying it, he was kind of like bouncing his head up and going like that, I pointed at him and I said, okay, it's time to shake it off, Billy. Let's just get things going. Yeah. <laughs> you guys don't have those concert insecurities. You are legitimately. I, I I'm want, on acid. You no, know, I yeah. There's that. <laughs> I would like to just. Uh, are you sure it was Cody's neighbor that made you insecure, and it wasn't? This is uh, Russell Westbrook. Doesn't mind whatever your judgments are about how strongly he loves Taylor Swift. Well, I do. But was it from the neighbor or just everybody? Because were you afraid of being caught dancing on by the internet? Were you afraid showing joy in front of people at a Taylor Swift concert? I think the game changes, Dan, once you're at the concert and you realize there's someone there that knows you and they know people that you know. Like, it changes everything. It's a very, it welcome, I understand it's it. a very yeah. welcoming bunch. I didn't expect to see anyone there that might know who I was. So I was like, this is great. I can just kind of hide in plain sight here. It'll be awesome. And if truth be told... I bought the tickets for me. I said that I bought them for my wife for her birthday, and I did give them to her for her birthday. I bought it because I wanted to go okay, to that concert. Okay, so nice. wait a minute. Yeah. So you're a little bit ashamed of this, and it's just now you're being unmasked now, but you volunteered it. You kicked Jeremy out. Jeremy's clearly uh, at the Aeros tour right now, too. No, but this is the first ever Billy kicks someone out of the conversation because now he wants to he wants to get on the bandwagon late when you could have been before anybody. You were before anybody here. Well, I mean, I, it's, it's not fun when everybody else joins the thing that you like. You know what I mean? So I was like, I just will kind of enjoy it privately. I was kind of upset. I don't... I I don't like this new popularity, this new thing that the tickets were hard to get. I had I had myself, my wife, and I even had my dad sign into like the pre-sales for like the Miami thing. We didn't get them. Didn't get them, of course. 
Mm. But I've been told to be patient that what ends up happening, and I don't know why I'm saying this on the air because it will not benefit me in any way. I've been told that what happens for the Taylor Swift concerts is a week before they re-release a bunch of tickets that were like kind of on hold for like promotional things or whatever. And you could get them at face value if you're just patient to let some people on the waiting list know. So I'm there on the waiting list. We'll see what happens, Dan. You want to go? If I get tickets? It is the toughest <laughs> ticket anywhere in, uh, never mind sports, Je- in entertainment. Jeremy's enjoying this way too much, yeah, this, this punishment. Hear. Plus Genesis is in there. Who's next? Can okay, I go? Okay, yes. Genesis is here until... <laughs> is she uh, stepping on someone? She That's is. how she yeah. mashes. Yeah, That's what she does, She's Billy. mashing people. Who is it? <laughs> Carmen. Uh, we have here, though, uh, Billy, you just said something. You said, I don't want to say this on air because it doesn't benefit me in any way. But- oh, there's so many things like that. I don't know if you guys are like that. I try to think of what are beneficial keep it secrets to keep to myself. Like today when I was driving in, I know exactly the perfect way to take the Palmetto on the 836 to get here, down to the lane and when to switch lanes. Oh, yeah. I know the perfect route. But I don't want to publicize that don't because then dare, people Billy. will take my yes. lanes and mm. know when it is that I switch out of said lanes. Mm. And then those lanes will get clogged and I will lose my essential express pass that I have. Mm-hmm. I know what you're doing. So you have everyone on your exact same route. No, they're not. At the moment, they're not on my route. But I'm saying if you take – this is very popular. You're, you Billy think get, somebody's going to no, get off three exits no, early no, just because no, Billy has get, a good route? If he gives them the shortcuts, the then everyone else goes the same way. That's it. If I tell them what – no, it's not the Elser. It's when you take – the A36 is very popular and so is the Palmetto. I will not be shamed for saying that. But I know which lane to be at when you're passing Marlins Park. I know which lane to be at while you're passing the airport. I know which lane to pass while you're passing that weird thing on 57th Avenue where all of a sudden the streets switch sides for some reason. And people forget how to drive. Bold prediction, it's the left lane. No. No. It's the right lane. Shut up! It's the right lane where people are turning in. He goes over and flies. (laughs) Enough talking out of... Tony, join him in the air tour right now. Tony, to the air tour. Head conversation. Air I don't like right. Taylor Swift. Ares tour right now. This Get is out. Go to Tony, the Ares tour. Tony, the out. The hell is wrong with this Tony, guy? Tony, out. And I saw Incredible. something. Incredible. Tony, I'm Ares s- tour. Tony, out. Inmediatamente. The ch- it's the Ahora. cheapest you'll ever get there, Tony. <laughs> you guys missed. Now that we're just unmasking Billy, you do shut your stupid pretty mouth, Tony. You do shut that. But I was trying to segue because you're not helpful at all to anybody, including the show. When you well, because I keep my helpful secrets y- to myself. Yes, you <laughs> offer traffic advice locally when we're not in the local hour anymore, and I'm trying. He's not offering. And, it. No, he's not. And I'm trying to get to Chris Cody because he actually has something that would be helpful to the audience. Because you said I have so many secrets that I don't want to share because they'd be too helpful with the audience. Too too helpful to the audience. Right. Chris Cody has a genuine, he's going to help the audience here not be surprised later in the day uh, unless you listen to this podcast at night. <laughs> I have no idea what you said up there. 220 today. There's a text coming. Are you kidding? I, at 220 today. It was your topic. At 220. I thought you, you were going, going to another it. thing. I was like, I got one helpful Dolphins thing here if you need that. That was amazing. It wasn't the best setup, granted, but I mean, it's your thing, Chris. I just want to warn America at 220 Eastern no, today. No, wait, 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 wait. I want to show people. I want to show people. God, I was scared there. I want to show people. Let's wait till 220. I want to let people see behind the curtain on what. Thank God I'm wearing glasses because I was scared there. Okay. But but wait till such a lonely feeling. Wait till they hear. Wait till they hear. Chris Cody doing something later. Take it away. He turned and said, "I have no idea what he's talking about." Where's he going? He was so scared. What's he going to ask me? This is the better part about this. This is the funnier part about this. How little Chris Cody has to do around here in general. That the only two things he thought were possible was Dan had something from me about 220 today. And also he has the one positive thing from Bills and Dolphins. And those are my only two choices. If you would have said 220, I would have been right there with you. (laughs) You never said 220. (laughs) I led you right to it. Taxes are due, folks. You had two things today. Two. You had a total of two things. Well, that's just different. I had other stuff, but the good stuff. (laughs) 